that. I thought I would do a video, you know, I've had some discussions with people and showing the reasons why a lot of stringers do what they do. So there's a lot of good videos out there on stringing tennis rackets. Everybody has their own techniques. And I really hope uh, if you watch all my videos, you don't want to become a stringer like me. You want to become a stringer like you. Because everybody has their own style, their own techniques, all everything. I want to go out, do your research, watch videos, learn from people. But you're going to end up eventually kind of creating your own style of stringing, you know. But try to keep it within parameters so that you're doing things correctly. But again, there's a lot of videos out there that discuss things, but never really go into detail or explain why you do things. So I don't know how long this will take. It'll probably be a long, dull, boring video, but I'm going to try. So uh, one thing like cutting strings out. You know, you see a lot of the stuff in the certification handbook and, or tests and everything, you know, start in the middle and work your way around. And that's fine. If you want to do it, that's fine. If I was stringing old wood rackets, old aluminum rackets, some of the old metal rackets or something, that's how I would do that. Uh, these All these modern rackets, you don't really have to. I mean, I go bottom up and then across. Um, will it damage the frame? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Anybody has had first-hand knowledge of it actually doing it. Uh, but that's how I do it. I've never had a problem with it. I've been doing this for, you know, 10, 11 years. Never had a problem. Never had an issue. Mounting the racket, uh, it seems pretty straightforward. And you'll hear everybody see, and I've watched videos. Or you'll see people up in here, they'll grab the knobs, you know, like, okay, mine, the clamps or the supports are just barely touching the frame right now, okay? They're barely touching. And then bring these in, they're barely touching. And I've seen guys come in here and crank on these things. You don't want to do that. That'll distort your frame. You're going to push it in, you're going to elongate it. You don't want to do that. Barely touching. And just, I mean, a little bit. I mean, it's just a little bit. And it's secured in there. That's all you want to do. You don't want to crank it down. You don't want it flopping around in there. But you want the supports to touch the frame. You don't want it to distort the frame. So if I was to pull these harder, I, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But I can actually see it distorting the frame. It's pulling the head up. I just want it to touch. And then just, when I say a little bit, I'm turning like, that you know i mean it's just it's a little bit uh and i'm using i don't know what string this is i just wanted something that has a good contrast i got a white string for the black machine and a blackish racket uh have no idea what string this is it's just something i've got hanging up uh cut your string at a good sharp tip kind of like that see a lot of people will come in they'll just cut it flush Cut a nice sharp, I don't know if you can see that, that's a nice sharp tip on there. That makes it easier to get in and out of the holes. So that's what you want to do, a nice sharp tip. But the reason you do that, so it's easier to string. Uh, let's see here. Know where to start. And the reason I start both of them at the same time, because you've already got them both in your hand, it's just easier. Uh, I don't know why some people bring one through and pull it a little bit and go back at the first for it and do it all over. And got them right there. Make sure that's not going to make sure you can't see. Eh, maybe we'll just string flat today. Okay, clamp. Learn your clamp pressure. I know on my clamp that's going to hold it, but it's not going to crush it. The reason you want to back up. Okay, a couple of things. When you put the string in the clamp, you want it to be as straight as possible. Uh, you don't want it to slip. That's the whole reason you're going to back up. But if you're using a starting clamp and you do back up, this is just me. I recommend never put the string deeper than the eyelets. The reason is there's so much pressure down here, it will slowly crush your string. And we're trying not to damage the string. And I have learned this through my experiences. 
If you keep the string at about eyelet level or just a little above, you don't want it too high, it'll slip out. But if you keep it right around the eyelet level, even in the old gamma clamps, that will be enough to hold your string and it's not going to damage your string. So that's why I do that. But the reason you want to back up and make sure it doesn't slip, if it, the string does slip in your cramp, uh, in your clamp, then you've already, you got your clamp dirty. One, you're damaging the string a little bit. But two, you've got your clamp dirty. Now, you're going to have to over either over tighten it and damage your string because it's too tight or risk string slipping the rest of the racket just because you got a dirty clamp. Okay, so next thing, Diablo. The reason, now not all machines have a Diablo, some do, some don't. Uh, I do not typically use it if I'm doing a poly, this is a poly. But the reason you use a Diablo, and it's not Diablo like the devil, it's Diablo. Diabolo, whatever you want to say it, is this will help take pressure from the clamping jaws off of the string. So you're, if you're doing this, you're getting 100% of the pressure on the string from the clamping jaws. If you use a Diabolo, you're getting probably half of that. So that's the whole purpose of using a Diabolo. Now, you'll also have people tell you, and it is true, that if you do use it, compared to not using it, you'll get a different finished string bed stiffness. And it's true, it's not a, a, a huge difference, but it, it is true. And I think, and this from what other people have researched, because when you do this, the string sits into the bottom of the clamp. If you don't use a Diablo and you come across here, it will not typically sit in the bottom of the clamp. You can get it down there. But you'll notice there's a slight angle difference, and that angle difference can cause a difference in your tension. Just the angle that this is pulling the string. It's not much. I mean, you're talking probably tenths of a pound, but it is a difference. Now, when you're stringing and going to use the Diablo, even if you're just going to use a tension head, well, a tension head wouldn't matter. I could just go straight in. If you're going to use Diablo, push the racket past. That way you can reel it on or you can wrap it around a lot easier. It's much more difficult to try to do it with the racket here than it is with the racket over here. Okay, a couple other things real fast, maybe. Okay, I go three. Then I'll pre-weed the next two. The reason I pre-weed these next two is just get them out of the way. The reason I go three, you want to keep the tension on your racket or the, I guess, the forces on your racket as even as possible. So you'll see some people to go one and one or two and two, three and three. Uh, a lot of guys will go four, 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 four. Uh, I just go three and three. I just That's just the, what I've developed over the years is three and three. I think it's the reason, I guess, is it'll still help. Is you're not going too far. I don't want to go too far. You know, I'm going forward is probably not going to hurt it, but I just don't do it. Okay, another one, a couple of them real quick. Uh, if you have a machine with gravity release clamps, Is do you release base first or clamp first? Uh, there's a lot of people out there that'll release the base first and they'll say that that is to release the pressure from the clamp so that when you do release the clamp, the string won't move in it and it'll keep you from getting micro scratches. Uh, I think micro scratches really have no bearing on your string job whatsoever. Uh, if you're lining the clamp up correctly and you release it, I mean, even, even doing it the other way, even releasing this first, when you release it, you're still creating micro scratches going up and down. So, I mean, that's just me. Okay, so you'll notice 
I've done my three. Now I'm going to do another three on this side. Once you've done these three, you've done three here, you've done three here, you have equalized the forces on that racket. So now it doesn't matter if you do this side or this side. I just keep doing this side because I've already got the string in my hand. So that's why I do that. And now you're going to hear a lot of people tell you to clamp as close to the frame as possible. And on the crosses, for the most part, that's really true. But on the mains, if you clamp right up against that grommet, so I'm going to try to do it. This is as far as far this way as I can get that clamp. Of course, that was number six, but okay. So I'm going to pre-weave this one. I may not even have to string. So just so y'all know, I'm going to cut this string out when I'm done. Yeah, I think I got enough. See, I did it on that one. So I go as close as I can over here. Okay. This string is now starting to relax a little bit. So when I go try to release it, it's not going to fall. Because it has pulled this clamp farther up against that grommet. It's putting pressure on this clamp and that grommet. So that part of the reason I don't do that. On the mains, I'll try to always leave just a small little gap. It's not much, you know, I think I've said before, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I keep it pretty close. I can use that and that would grip and hold that. You can also use a jumper. Uh, what was I going to tell you about the tie off? I don't know. Hit the knot button. Do you have to use knot tension? No, you do not. Now I know, I just did that one the base first. So I know my machine, no matter what I do, if I release the clamp first, I'm not going to get it to drop from that turn. Now, a lot of people will save the knot strings last so they can do them together. Probably a good idea. That way you're only having to grab your clamp once. And again, I'm fixing to cut this stuff out, so I don't really care how tight it is. I didn't even show you about that hat. Okay. That one, I know, I uh, would probably do it. We're going to try it, but again, I don't really care. And he'll, see, that ain't going to ever be. something here in a second. Just cut these. I like to cut these at an angle. That way it creates a little angle kind of going with the frame. Okay, let's take this. Stick that in there. Okay, starting your crosses. Several different ways to start your crosses. Now you'll notice I'm not going back cutting the tips on all of mine all the time because I've always got my, when I cut them off the reel, cut them out of the sets, I've always cut them at an angle. So, even in some of my videos, when I teach people, I always teach them to start over here with the first grommet. And I always start handle away from me with this side if I'm teaching that method. And I always teach, and the reasons I do this, and we're trying to talk about reasons, is a lot of stringers, I'm going to say most of your stringers out there, everything is very mechanical to them. You know, it's all muscle memory. So they don't sit here and think about, oh wait, I need this, I want it to start over, I want it to start, they, 
know, I don't think about that, I just do it. So if you skip one gap, one grommet, one gap, then I will always string, I always string every racket, no matter what racket, where my first one goes under and my last one is over. Because feeding the string in this way, that's like a string I don't have to string, and finishing over, that's like a string I didn't have to weave. So that's why I do it. So I would teach them to start under, bring it across, like that. So that's how I teach people to string, okay? Uh, there's also people, and what I actually do is I will start on this side. So if you start on this side, you start basically the way you want your string to end. But I will start like this one. Well, that's actually not, tr not true. Uh, if you have a racket that has two gaps, it'd be different. So this one I would start under, or I mean over. I go across. Then you come in here, go that one. Like that, and that is, ends up the same way. Like that. And so that's how you can do it. Now, if you had two gaps, you also have people that might start on the third one. And they will weave that one and come back. That way, you know, that way there's less pressure on the string on the inside. But you do, again, you develop your technique, you do it your way. Okay. Now that we're to here, and what I always do is I'll go ahead and do my third string. Actually, I always put my starting clamp on here first, but. I'll go ahead and do this one. Oh, as of now, we haven't done any tension on the crosses. Okay. In the past, so, so I'm putting that in there. So I stuck that string just as far down in the clamp as I could. I don't know if you can see it on here or not but that flattened that string out. So that's the reason I never put it deeper than about, you know, like that. Kind of a bad string to kind of produce. But about like that. Because even though it's holding it, it's not putting near as much pressure as down in the bottom. So again, I hope that came across, but that flattened that out a little bit. And that'll damage your string. You don't want that on your knot, which we're going to talk about in a second. I know this video probably seems like I'm just rambling. So, starting clamp. I typically just put the starting clamp on here, string no deeper than the eyelets. Like that. Okay, that's what I always do. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, and if you want them, you can go buy them. Have like a little letter pad, little wood pads, whatever. They stick on here like this. And that's, I mean, two-fold kind of, sort of. I don't know if they tell you this stuff. The reason you would do it is to protect the, the head guard. And keep from scratching it up with your clamp. Uh, it also helps distribute some of the pressure when you pull tension. to uh, So that the clamp is not putting 100% all the pressure just right against the frame. Uh, kind of the reason I don't do that is if you do this right up against your frame anyway, well one, look at this head guard. I mean, it's already beat and scratched. I don't, I don't care if it gets scratched up. Even if it's a brand new racket, you're not going to create enough of a scratch for anybody to ever notice it. But this thing's already beat up. Uh, every racket I've got back here is beat up so but this is not actually touching the frame anyway it's already these eyelets are hitting the head guard okay so that's already distributing some of that pressure but if you want you can get these i'll try to put a link in that i'm not i'm not like super tech savvy 
So I will put a link. Uh, Richard Parnell sells the Parnell pad, uh, which are fantastic. If you want to get one, I'd get order one of his. I just made this out of some, this is an old uh, strop for sharpening knives. So I just cut one out of that. Uh, now, a better idea, and Parnell also sells these. He calls them the, uh, the Parnell block, I believe which look exactly like his old, this is not a Parnell, this is, again, I just made this up. But he makes them called a block, which are probably, I don't know, probably an inch, inch and a half wide or long. You put those on, and I've had people send them to me. You can make them out of pretty much anything. Here's one made out of a block of wood. And what you would do, and you can make them out of PVC pipe or whatever, is you do this. Now, I like this. Even though I don't do it, I like this much better than just the pad. This is actually protecting your string. And so, okay, so all this string right here is not being crushed, damaged, scratched, anything by this, by this starting clamp. So that when you tie your knot, over here when you tie your knot this is all good clean fresh string undamaged on anything um, if you had players in the past you know i mean common mishit breakage is always up in this area and a lot of times especially and you know i've had a guy and i diagnosed this myself years ago but i've had other people call me up say hey i've got an issue where i've got a lot of strings that are breaking up by the knot and the first thing I ask them, do you use a starting clamp? So the reason you would do something like this is to protect that string. Because when you damage that string going into the knot, if you get a mess it up here, it's a good chance it's going to break that string, the knot string. Not the one that is tied on, but the string going actually into the knot. Because it is weaker and damaged because you, over, you put your clamp on for too long. And again, I will take my clamp off after my third pull here that way it's on this string for as little as possible which again i'm exaggerating everything here because i'm going to cut all this out because again this is not the string that goes in this racket and i don't even know what string this is technofiber or something maybe but i really i don't know i i don't know so anyway again i know it sounds like i'm rambling because i'm trying to get my thoughts i don't have like cue cards or anything but that's the whole purpose behind this, is just to protect your string. And again, I don't do it. I don't set the string very deep into the, into the clamp. And I don't leave the clamp on very long. So that has eliminated the issue of people, of that string breaking on a lot of mishits. Now, will it prevent it 100%? No. Even this is not going to prevent it 100%. I still get people who get mishits that aren't the knot string. So, and they break. So, if, you know, either way. But you can make these out of PVC pipe and all that good stuff. But again, if you want to support a stringer, uh, order as the parnellknot.com or something like that. And I'll put a link if I can figure out how to put links in there. I'll put a link in there where you can order them from Richard Parnell. I mean, they're fantastic. They're made in nice, fancy leather. You can go in different colors. and So that's what I would do. The reason... reason when you're pulling string you do this you're trying to create keep the string from getting a friction burn across here so if you just pull it yeah you know, we do this one okay so i have to just Pull this as fast as I can. Oh, there's a notch here. Here, feels like. Definitely one here. I can see the one here. 
Anyway, the one's closer, you can, you can kind of see it. You can see it. I can see it. You can't see it. I can see here where it pulled. Anyway, that's why you don't do that. And I've already pulled that up. Okay, 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 okay. But again, okay, third string. So that was pulled. I'll go weave my next one. Reason that you weave one ahead, it is easier to weave one ahead than it is to weave every individual string. When you're used to this tilt, uh, being tilted towards you all the time, string like this, feel like I'm falling over. So, we're on our third string. I'm gonna tie my knot, and we do not tension. the clamp. Actually, put this clamp on before you remove your starting hand. That way, if it slips, it'll catch it. And this one is Bradley's Offset Tool from Bradley's Racket Sales and Service. Again, by doing that, and I know I know I had a clamp on here, but we're pretending that's all clean string right there going around the grommet and into the knot so you'd have good clean string with no damage on it. And I tie the far nail knot, you tie whatever knot you want to tie. Um, the reason you will see some people put their clamp on here and they will pull tension on this top string. I did not do that. I pulled tension on the second string. The reason I do that, this second string, when you pull tension, is going to have true tension on it. This one will not. But this one, we're going to go back and add true tension plus the knot tension once we pull the string. So if you're pulling it here, and then you come over here and pull again, and then you come up here and pull the knot, you have essentially pulled that string three times. And yeah, probably twice, because this clamp's gonna keep it. But you're pulling it twice. One, that's a pull you don't have to make. Wear and tear on the machine. It's time you don't have to take. But that's the reason I pull this one first instead of the top string. So, FYI. And the rest is really just kind of string and rackets. You just weave. So again, I'm starting under. I always finish over. And if you want to learn a lot of like little tips, a guy named Patrick Markey. Uh, he's strung. I don't know what all he's strung. I think he's strung U.S., the French, Australian, probably a bunch of other little stuff. Uh, he has a, a, a YouTube channel called Racket Stringing Tips. Uh, I would recommend, I'll put links down below to his channel. Go in and watch some of his videos. Uh, he does some interviews. He's interviewed me a few times and another guy a few times. We just kind of sit and talk and share ideas about stringing rackets and stringing and all this other stuff. Brad's uh, the other guy that he talks to, his name is Brad. He's a lot more interesting and entertaining than I am because he used to be uh, Serena and Venus's hitting partner when they were young. He used to string their rackets for them. Okay. You notice. Okay. I keep the string in my hand. Okay. So when I'm going this way, I'll try to walk through this. I'm going to string this racket. Now. A lot of people will go ahead and pull this all the way up until they just barely have enough left to pull tension, okay? So holding the string up. The reason for doing this is it will help pull the string down and keep the string straight. If you do not do that, more than likely you are going to get smiley faces. And when you finish stringing your racket, you want their strings as straight as possible when you're done. Now, are they going to be perfect? Probably not. And you have to kind of learn your string because some string will stay all the way up. Some string will come down no matter what. So you got to kind of learn the string that you're using and working with. 
Okay, so when they do this, okay, then you gotta come over here and you gotta find this end again. I don't like to do that. So when I string, I will go push my weave across and I will put my end out and I will leave it there. That way I know where it is for the next one. So I can pull tension, do that, and I've got it in my hand. Okay. So that's the reason I do not pull the string all the way across. But again, develop your own technique. Uh, if you want to pull it all the way across, why do they do that? Uh, they say that because there's less friction down here to damage the string once this one's been pulled. Okay, so pay attention there, move my clamp, release it. So yes, there is more pressure on the strings than, and I've got to pull it all across, okay? But if you're fanning the strings, you're not going to damage it anyway. So I personally just don't worry about it. I've never had any complaints about it. I've never had any strings get damaged from it. So again, that's the reason I just go here so I know where it's at. And let's see, what else can we talk about why we do things? And I know I've seen video of people cleaning rackets and do a little inspection for cracks and stuff like that. I kind of look for cracks for the most part, but I'm not going to sit here and do a 10 point inspection on a racket. Uh, it's one thing if you've only got one or two or three rackets you're doing, especially washing a racket. I saw a YouTube video guy took his to the sink with a toothbrush and some soap and I mean, he was talking about great customer service, and I tell you, it's great customer service. But he spent longer cleaning the racket than what, you know, you should spend stringing the racket. And then you get all that water and soap and all that stuff into the grommets and into the frame. And uh, you don't think about it until later on, but you got staples down here. And uh, you got staples. You get water down there, it's going to rust. For the most part, though, when you're taking the strings out of a racket, you can just kind of look over them real quick. You, you, once you've done it long enough, you pick up on the real, you know, if you start seeing little cracks in the paint, stuff like that, get a little bit more thorough inspection or done something. But I do not clean rackets anymore. I uh, figure if the player wants their racket to be nice and spotless, that they can clean it. But I am not going to clean their rackets. Okay. When you have strings that are close to the supports, you want them to lay in a way that they do not, or if they do have to touch them when you pull, Like when I pull the tension on this one, I know it's going to go this way, so I want it on this side. I don't want it to pull against that support. One, it's not good for the support. Two, that's friction that is taking away from your tension. So you want to, if no matter what you do, it hits that support. I don't think this one will not pull away. But if you do one that no matter what you do, it's going to hit one side of the support, you want it to hit the side with the least amount of pressure or tension. And again, on um, all these videos, you go out and watch a lot of them. Because a lot of people are going to give you probably different reasons they do things than what I do. Uh, everybody has their own technique. Now, I've taught a lot of people, and I've taught them all to do things the way that I do things. But a lot of those people over the years have developed their own little idiosyncrasies. And their techniques and my technique, even though they might be similar, are no longer the same. Okay, 
doing this last one, I always said I can't weave it. So the reason I'm doing this, I can push it down, push it up my thumb and push it. It just, to me, it's a little bit faster than going one at a time. You know, that's just what I've kind of come up with. I think uh, Parnell did the same thing as he pulled with his thumb. Knot tension, do you have to do it? I think we talked about it and we don't. Make sure on your notch, clamp away, clamp far enough away from your grommet so you can actually tie your knot. Now, if you have, oh, and there's good videos out there about uh, doing tubing. Somebody just came out with one a few weeks ago. Uh, excellent video. I recommend you watch it. If I can find the link to it, I will post it. Okay, Parnell knot. If you'll notice, the string is this string, the second string. As I was pulling it, it got behind the first loop. You don't want it to do that. If it ever does that, it'll screw your knot up. I mean, it'll still hold, but it'll be ugly. All right, there you go, finish dragging. Uh, setting off all. I've had people ask me about these things in the past. You don't have to use one, you can use your fingers. I don't use my fingers, because after a while your fingers hurt. So I use these. For the most part, the crosses should be relatively straight. The mains, you can go as you're stringing and straighten your mains out. I've had people ask, do you have to hit every hole? No, you can usually hit bottom, middle, and top. Don't even have to do that, I guess. There's here and here and here and here. And you can see which strings are crooked and which ones are straight. Anyway, that's what you got to do. Hit a here, 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 and that'll straighten the whole string out. So let's see how quick I got them. Uh, not too bad, starting here. And again, you can use your fingers to do this. I just use the point of this and go in there and you kind of pull it over. Not that it matters, so again, as soon as I turn the camera off, I'm gonna cut those out. Uh, but what I was gonna say is you can go through here and if you have a, a missing grommet, it's better to do it before it's on the machine, but you can always drill it out and do individual grommets. So like I have the FedEx grommets, so you can replace individuals. Or if, even if you just need to do tubing, that's where I was going. Uh, you can do the, know which ones you need to run your tubing with. But I'd want, again, I'll try to find the link and post it. So that you know where to look for good uh, tubing videos. But anyway. Again, I think I just rambled more than I actually said stuff, but hope you got something out of it. You understand why people use either the pad or the block or a spacer or whatever you want to call it. Why people pull tension on the top string. Some people don't pull tension on the top string. Uh, why some people do three, four. I mean, some people will do four. Then they'll go four. Then they'll come back here for four. Then they'll go back here for four. Then they'll do the two knots. Uh, Everybody has their own reasons for doing all that stuff. I just three, 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 you know, that's how I do it. Uh, but if you got anything out of this, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if not, I guess give me a thumbs down. I don't know. But uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll try to post some links. Follow these links. Learn from all these guys. And uh, y'all have a good day. Good holiday.